Hello, my name is Nancy Strickland and in the next seven minutes I'm going to show you a nice way to work with data in your Windows Phone 7 Silverlight applications. Windows Phone 7 apps use data binding to display data and to let the user manipulate that data. A binding between a UE control and a data object means that when underlying data changes, the UE element changes automatically. And if the user makes a change in a UE element, the bound data value is automatically updated too. A common use of data binding is to link a list box to a collection of items that you want to display in it. Here's the XAML that binds a list box to a collection named items. And this makes the text value for the text block in the list, whatever the line one property is for the item on that particular line in the list. Both these bindings are used in the default phone list application, which is what we'll look at next. One of the Silverlight phone project templates that's available when you start a new project is a Windows phone list application. The text over here on the right explains that it's a project that gives you a built-in list and navigation controls, and there's a picture of what a list might look like. List applications are really practical for lots of phone applications that display data for the user, and you'll see in the demo in a minute that the template makes it really easy to create a master detail app very quickly. Here are some of the files that are part of the template. The main view model sample data XAML has sample data that's displayed at design time. We'll talk a little more about it in just a minute in the demo. Then item view model CS is the view model for detail data for each individual item in the list. And main view model CS is the view model for the main page. The application has a property called view model that's an instance of this class and it's used in both the main page and the details page to show the items by setting the data context for the list. App XAML is the main application and the code here mostly deals with high-level issues like the launching event and uh, global exception handling. Details page XAML shows the details for each individual item in the list and then main page XAML is the master list. If you select an item here the main list box selection changed event gets fired and that navigates the user to the details page for that item. To get ready for this demo, I had to do some setup for using Windows Phone 7 in Visual Studio 2010. The instructions for that are in the video, Getting Started, which is part of this series of videos on MS Dev. I want to use the list application, so I'll choose that template. You can see that there's a list box already in the XAML with Design 1, Design 2, etc. This is design time data that comes from the main view model sample data XAML file here in the sample data folder. I'm going to do some editing of this XAML later in the demo, but for now I'm not going to make any changes because I'm going to run it now just as it is so that you can see what functionality this template gives you for free. You can see that the emulator now shows items named runtime123 etc. If I click on any one of them, then I go to the detail page for that item and if I hit the hardware back button then I get taken back to the master list. So the basic master detail relationship is all set up for you including navigation. Now I'm going to minimize the emulator but I'm not going to close it and I want to stop debugging so I can make some changes to this default code. For a simple app there's really only two places where you have to make changes to use your own data and they're in the view model folder. First I'll look at the item view model. You can see that this is a class that sets up the properties of the data you're going to display. In this case it sets up three string properties, line 1, line 2, and line 3. There's also a property changed event and an event handler. Here you could add or remove or change properties depending on the data you're working with. Now I'm going to go to the main view model. In the constructor it's declaring a generic observable collection of item view model and that it instantiates as many individual item view model instances as you need filling in the data for the three properties for each individual item. I'm going to delete all but three of these and change the values. I've pasted in the names of three plants with their common names and their scientific names and I didn't put in a value for the line 3 property. 
now I'm going over to the XAML and make some changes there. I'm going to change the details page XAML first. If I select this text block, I can see over here in the XAML that it's binding to line 3. I didn't put anything in the line 3 property, so I'm going to change that to line 2. And then I think that this font looks small, so I'm going to move down here to the style attribute and change that from phone text title 3 style to title 2. And immediately I can see on my design surface how that's going to look. Now since I've put line 2 on the details page, I'm going to take it off the master page. So I'll open main page XAML. Now I'm going to click on the list box and look at it in the XAML. I can see that there's two text blocks here and the second one is the one that's bound to line 2 so I'm going to remove that. And now I can see in the design view that the items are too close together so while I'm here I'm going to change the margin. The last margin is the bottom so I'll change it to 20. And immediately again I can see in the design view what it's going to look like. I could make any other changes I wanted to the design also. I'll change the title here. Okay, now I'm ready to run it. I'll select one of these plants so you can see the detail and then back to the main list. You see how easy it is to set up this simple master detail application? You could use a list app like this to set up a menu with options or you could use it to show data that's been loaded dynamically from a data source. This would be a good design choice for displaying data that you stored in the cloud on Windows Azure and then retrieved using a web service. But that's for another demo. So that's a quick look at using a Silverlight phone list app to display data in less than seven minutes. I'll put a copy of the code up on my blog for download, and as I post new videos, I announce it on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.